in a dusty schoolyard on the outskirts of Lagos, the scorching West African sun beat down relentlessly. But for the hundreds of students gathered, the sweltering heat was an afterthought, for they were in the presence of royalty. Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, had arrived at the unassuming government secondary school as part of their first official overseas tour since stepping back from royal duties in 2020. And while the visit carried all the ceremonial pomp and pageantry one would expect, it was the prince's candid, deeply personal remarks that left an indelible mark addressing the sea of eager young faces before him. Harry spoke of his own struggles with mental health and the weight of growing up in the all too unforgiving spotlight. He revealed how the tragic loss of his mother, Diana, at just 12 years old had shaped his childhood in ways both seen and unseen. For a long time, I carried around a tremendous amount of grief, unprocessed trauma, and a fair bit of anger and confusion. The prince admitted, his voice thick with hard-earned wisdom. And rather than confront those emotions head on, I found myself trying to outrun them through work, travel, and a thousand other distractions. It was an astonishingly vulnerable admission from a member of the royal family, an institution that has long prioritized stoicism and a stiff upper lip above all else. But for Harry, that commitment to shattering stigmas surrounding mental health has become a defining mission since founding the Invictus Games and partnering with coaching organizations like Better Up. On this sweltering Nigerian afternoon, that mission took on even greater urgency. Because while the students hanging on his every word may have been separated from the prince by oceans and continents, their shared experiences of grappling with anxiety, depression, and the immense pressures of youth transcended all cultural and socioeconomic divides. I know that each and every one of you has likely felt that same weight on your shoulders at some point. Harry continued, the stress of exams, the anxiety of figuring out your future, the pain of losing a loved one, or simply feeling overwhelmed by all that life throws your way. And when those moments come, as they inevitably will, I don't want you to feel ashamed or weak for struggling. There's no shame in having a bad day, or a bad week, or even a bad year. It was a powerful validation from one of the world's most recognizable figures, an acknowledgement that even for the most privileged among us, the universal trials of the human experience can leave scars. By openly discussing his own emotional battles, Harry was extending a hand to these students, letting them know that they need not suffer in silence. For Meghan, watching her husband connect with such authenticity was yet another reminder of why she fell in love with the real Harry, the one the world so rarely glimpses behind the royal veneer. He has such a natural ability to relate to people from all walks of life, to make them feel heard and understood, she later remarked. It's one of the qualities I admire most about him as a husband, father, and human being. As the prince continued fielding questions from the students, each one more heartfelt and vulnerable than the last, it became clear that his candor was striking a profound chord. Teenagers who had previously been too afraid or ashamed to discuss their inner demons were now raising their hands, desperate to share their own stories of struggle. The young girl named Amina spoke of the crippling anxiety she had experienced after her father's passing, terrified that showing any signs of weakness would disappoint her family. A boy named Adamo confided in his battles with depression and feelings of hopelessness, fearing they made him seem ungrateful for his opportunities. To each admission of pain, Harry responded with the same empathy, wisdom, and affirmation letting them know that their emotions were valid. Their vulnerability was a show of courage, not weakness. It was the kind of open dialogue and destigmatization around mental health that has been all too lacking, not just in Nigeria, but in cultures around the world. As the event drew to a close and the prince prepared to depart for his next engagement, the students erupted in thunderous cheers and applause. Because while the fleeting royal visit would soon be a memory, Harry's words had clearly resonated on a deeper level. For young people so often told to toughen up or dismiss their inner turmoil as a passing phase, hearing that same struggle normalized and affirmed by a global figure like Prince Harry was powerfully validating. It was a reminder that our shared humanity transcends borders, cultures, and bloodlines, a truth the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have embodied through their ceaseless advocacy.
In the days and weeks ahead, the royal tour will continue traversing Nigeria and the surrounding regions, shining a light on issues like climate change, women's empowerment, and youth leadership. But for the students of that unassuming Lagos Secondary School, their encounter with Prince Harry would be remembered as something far more indelible, a masterclass in radical empathy from one of the world's most unlikely mental health advocates. Because in allowing himself to be vulnerable, in giving voice to emotions so often suppressed by traditional masculine norms, Harry was extending an olive branch to millions of young people grappling with those same internal battles. He was letting them know that their struggles are valid, their pain is real, and that there is no shame in being human. It's a deceptively simple message, but one that has been all too lacking across cultures, generations, and socioeconomic strata. And coming from the once restless royal who has forged his own path towards emotional liberation, it carried a particular resonance and had won credibility. I spent far too many years burying my emotions, trying to convince myself and everyone around me that I was perfectly fine. Harry reflected during a quiet moment later that evening. But true strength doesn't lie in pretending we're impervious to life's hardships. It's about having the courage to be vulnerable, to ask for help, and to show up for others who are suffering just as we once did. As the prince's words echoed across the Nigerian night, they served as a powerful rallying cry against the culture of silence that has perpetuated so much intergenerational trauma and anguish. Because in giving voice to our shared struggles, in allowing ourselves to be imperfect and emotionally honest, perhaps we can begin to dismantle the stigmas that have kept far too many people suffering in isolation. It's an arduous journey, one that Harry himself is still navigating day by day. But if his willingness to bear his soul to a schoolyard of students half a world away is any indication, the prince seems resonant in paving a more open, accepting path forward for those who will one day inherit this world. So while the images beamed around the globe may have depicted Harry and Meghan's royal tour through the traditional lenses of diplomacy and ceremonial pomp, the true impact of their visit may have been far more subtle and infinitely more meaningful. Because in that dusty Nigerian schoolyard, a prince showed the world that real strength often lies in our most vulnerable moments, and that sometimes the most powerful act of service is simply showing up, opening our hearts, and letting others know that they need never walk alone.